Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. Once again, we're having some significant te technical difficulties uh, getting the video feed up. I'm not sure what's going on. I know Facebook just did an update. That seems to have thrown a little bit of a wrench in the works. So uh, we're going to figure it out, but I think it's going to take me a little while. Uh, anyway, nice to be with you this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. I'm going to read to you tonight from the Daily Lectionary once again, from the New Testament reading assigned for this day, which is 1 Timothy chapter 5. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. Honor widows who are truly widows. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. She who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who is self-indulgent indulgent, is dead even while she lives. Command these things as well, so that they may be without reproach. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith, and is worse than an unbeliever. Let a widow be enrolled if she is not less than sixty years of age, having been the wife of one husband, and having a reputation for good works. If she has brought up children, she has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted, and has devoted herself to every good work, but refuse to enroll younger widows, for when their passions draw them away from Christ, they desire to marry, and so incur condemnation for having abandoned their former faith. Besides that, they learn to be idlers, going about from house to house, and not only idlers, but also gossips and busybodies saying what they should not. So I would have younger widows marry, bear children, manage their households, and give the adversary no occasion for slander. For if someone have, for some have already strayed after Satan, if, anyone believe, if any believing woman has relatives who are widows, let her care for them. Let the church not be burdened, so that it may care for those who are truly widows. And that is the word of the Lord. So Paul is giving these instructions to Timothy about you know caring for each other in life church, and you see he calls out or focuses specifically on widows. And it is important that the church take care of those saints who you know, grow up in the church, those uh, wonderful women, and I know many whose husbands are long gone, uh, who care for the people of God, who have throughout their life you know given so much to the church, and we. Darn well better, as Paul says, you know, care for them. And the other side of that coin is is people, I don't, I don't run into this very much, people who, because we don't operate like Paul does too much anymore, but people who are looking for a handout and and and, and uh, um, take advantage of the church's generosity, because I don't see that too often the way we are structured. Uh, but, you know, there is something about, to, I don't run into this too much, usually Christians step up to the plate and do what they're supposed to do. But the idea that we care for our loved ones. Now, that's a complicated issue. Uh, parents, you, you never stop being a child of your parents. All of us know that. And all of us usually go out of the way. And I'm delighted to see this pastor to care for our parents. And that doesn't mean we don't make those hard decisions at times. They have to go into nursing homes and things like that because we just physically don't have the expertise and the skill to provide the amount of care that they need or the financial resources. It can be quite expensive bringing caregivers into the home. 24-hour caregivers, and also a very stressful process. There's a lot of vetting that has to happen and a lot of trust that has to happen. So it is very difficult. Now, most people try to keep their loved ones in the home as much as they can. What Paul is saying here is that we have to do that. So even if they go into the nursing home, you know, we've got to visit them. Uh, some of the I, I have been a chaplain at a nursing home, and uh, this was nowhere around here, although I'm sure it happens here as well. But there are a certain number of people at the nursing home, and you can make a full-time ministry as a pastor at a nursing home. And this was not a super large nursing home. They had 105 nursing beds. 
but you can make a full-time ministry out of that. And some of these poor people had nobody to come visit them. And sometimes it was because the family was so far away and they themselves did not want to move. That did happen. Sometimes it was just, you know, people didn't want to be troubled with their parent. And those were often not you know, people that I saw in church. There, were, there was no requirement that you had to be a member of a church, the church, but I was there to minister to them. Thanks be to God for that. But God wants you. Remember, that's the fourth commandment. We care for our loved ones, beginning with our parents. We make sure that they are fed, clothed, particularly as that end of life and they can't care for themselves. And again, this does not mean that you can't put your parent in a nursing home. Sometimes that has to happen, but we really work hard to care for them in our homes as long as we can and provide for them. And I see that, you know, as a pastor, this is what the church does. It honors the commandments. It's not like it's not like the pagans. And then we don't take advantage of the church's generosity either. I, I don't run into that very much, um, at least not from the people of the church. That you know, they're 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 the ones giving and 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 providing for the needs of their neighbors. So my job is to make sure. People aren't to, in that in that sense are ma- is making sure people aren't taking taking advantage of that generosity. So again, you know, tonight was we pray for families, which we do on Wednesday nights. We'll pray for single mothers. Um, maybe we'll include widows as well, uh, because you know that they have to work so hard, uh, and, and then uh, it is incumbent upon the church to care for those people who you know, don't have a spouse and maybe don't have any children nearby to care for them. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that the gifts of marriage and the relationship between husbands and wives, parents and children may be blessed according to your good harmony and order, and that we live our lives in these relationships, in these vocations, according to your word. As always, we pray for parents who must raise their children alone, and for widows, but for those parents who raise their children alone, that they would not fall into loneliness or discouragement, and that we, as their brothers and sisters, would help them as we are able, and for the widows to ensure that we are strengthened as your people to care for their needs, that uh, those who have blessed us with many years of prayers and work around the church, that we may now bless them and care for them. May we as your people be an example and a light to our communities and neighborhoods and a blessing to our neighbors, caring for those especially who have none to care for them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are crying out to you tonight. For Allison, for Deb, for John, for Justin, for Tony, who, thanks be to God, is improving. For Jason, for Megan, for Betty, for brothers and sisters in Christ from our congregation, Dennis and Len. For all who are crying out to you, that you may place your hand upon them according to your gracious will and heal them. We ask you to be with Jimmy, a friend of the congregation, that you would comfort him as his dad was called from this valley of sorrows, as the family mourns, that you'd bless them with peace, the peace of the empty tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the wonderful promise of a joyful reunion before your throne with all those who have gone before us in the faith. Again, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 864, Shepherd of Tender Youth. One of the great hymns written by Clement of Alexandria, who died about the year 220-220. Shepherd of tender youth, guiding in love and truth, through devious ways, Christ our triumphant King, we come your name to sing, and hear our children bring to join your praise. That stands a one of five, again, with hymn number 864, Shepherd of Tender Youth. That, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.